talk about the setup next. Setup's very important because the setup enables you to start your swing with your upper left side and make the correct motion and make the correct arc in your swing. And in a correct setup, you, you almost have the urge that you can swing and you can move your body. The setup really basically has three characteristics to it. And I'm talking about the upper body right now, the upper trunk. Number one characteristic is that it's erect. By erect, it's probably bent 15, 20 to 25 degrees from the waist. Demonstrate that for a second, Gene. He has an erectness in his upper body. Okay, thanks. Now, basically speaking, let me tell you, if he's bent over too much, he can't turn. Very, very difficult to turn. Show him being bent over too much, Gene. He can't turn from there. If he's standing too erect, the club won't go in the air. It'll go around his waist because his, his right shoulder won't go up when he turns. And if his right shoulder doesn't go up, his right arm's going to go around his waist if he stands too erect. So this, this erectness is E in my little three letters that are abbreviated for the characteristics of the address position. The next letter in the, the address position is O. That means open with your trunk. What do I mean by open with your trunk? You can see that Gene's club, his target line is represented by this club, by this stick. And his club is approximately in that direction. You can see that his feet are parallel to that direction. That's called parallel left. You may be a little closed, a little open with your feet. It's not too important as long as it's not too extreme. What you do see here, though, that's not parallel, is his trunk of his body, his shoulders. His shoulders are left of parallel. And his hips and his waist area is left of parallel. And this is very important. Let me tell you why they're left of parallel. They're left of parallel because this golf club is not laying vertical. If it was vertical, his shoulders would be in the same line as these sticks. But because the club's not vertical, because the club is laying on an oblique angle, the part of the grip that his right hand is holding is not only lower than the part where his left hand's holding, but it's further away from him, anteriorly further away from him than his left hand, approximately this much, which would mean that this shoulder would be out in front of this shoulder by the same amount as his right hand is in front of his left hand. And if his right arm is bent, even more to allow for the fact that his right arm is bent by how much it's bent, which is a crimp in the right arm, which a lot of players use to subjugate and let the right side be more relaxed. That's O, that's open. The third characteristic is that when he addresses the golf ball, and he'll face you for this, that you can see that his right shoulder is lower than his left shoulder, a considerable amount. If he's in the, in the correct position, and he is, and he does have his right side subjugated and lower than his left side, that generally this shoulder, when parallel to the ground, will fall about in the armpit area, if this club is parallel to the ground. And that's right where this is. That could be called five or six inches lower with the right than the left. Most good players comply to that. This puts the spine in the correct spot. Because this shoulder is lower than this, the spine is what I call right of center. If the shoulders were square around this way and he had this lower than this, he'd be back too far and be off balance to the right and not be able to spring with his legs. So these are the three characteristics. Now, how do we get into this position? To accomplish EOL, erect, open, and lower, to get set up correctly, this is the routine that I'd like you to use. That's what, that's what he just did then. He set up to it. Now I'm going to break that three second maneuver down in, in pieces so that you can understand what exactly he did. The first thing he did was lay the golf club down and measure himself from the ball by putting the toe of the club an inch and a half from the ball. The weight is on his right foot. His left arm hangs at full length, close to his body. 
That measures him. After he does that, he steps back two or three inches with his right foot and gets 40 degrees open or a little less than half facing the target. This would be facing the ball. This would be completely facing the target, and he's about 40 degrees, a little less than half facing the target. He's in position to, to now go to the golf ball and maintain that same amount of openness. He's now got the club down towards his target with his body in that same amount of openness. Now he's going to take his stance. And that's basically the three parts of this routine. Let's go through that step to the golf ball. Once the player's measured, and he steps back and gets in, in his preset position, he's now 40 degrees open. When he steps to the golf ball and takes his little step right here, I'd like to discuss that little step. That little step right there is, I think, the most important part of this routine. Because if you want to keep your body open like he did, he has to shift his weight naturally. We're in a 40 degree open position. So to be able to shift your weight naturally and walk at 40 degrees, you have to know what you're looking for. We can easily shift our weight if we walk straight forward. But we're walking at an angle here. To set the feeling up of how your weight has to be on your right foot when you take this little step, I recommend that you do what I'm going to have Gene do to show you this. Take three or four steps at a normal speed and stop like he did with his rear foot perpendicular to the ground. Do that again, Gene. Take three or four steps at a normal speed and stop with the rear foot perpendicular to the ground. Perpendicular. What that does is put the weight between the heel and the ball. He's standing comfortably on what some people call the flat of the foot. Actually, when you take a step in life, you, your heel strikes first, you go on to the center, you go on to the outside of your foot to the metatarsal, and then you push off with the toe. That, they're the three phases of a step. When we step to the ball right here, we're only going to use the first two. We're not pushing off on the third one. Do it one more time. I want to emphasize one more thing. That's how important I think this is. When you stop in that position, which is a comfortable position, that right leg is straight, not bent, not stiff, but just the way you'd stand or walk. I'm just going to point out a few things about this little step that I think are important, just so that you can have a frame of reference for it and be able to check yourself if you can't hit the golf ball and you're trying to use this routine. When, when Gene takes a little step to the golf ball, his hips are moving, take approximately about eight or nine inches from where they started. That's the first thing. If he fails to do that, if he only if he doesn't take the step right and only and, and keeps his weight on his on his right heel, he's only going to move about three inches and bend over and close his shoulders, which is what he just did. Conversely, if he moves more than the nine inches and gets onto his toe of his right foot, he's going to close and bend over for that reason. Between those two mistakes, if you make a mistake, is going to be your mistake. That's why I want to go back again to the fact of that drill that I had Gene demonstrate three times. The step is what carries him to the ball. He put that club on his hip, pointed the club to the ball before he took a step, and then took his little step. That club would get very close to where it started, so that all he would have to do is put his hands together, and he's got the club to the ball. So his step got him to the ball. His little two or three inch step that moved his body eight or nine inches is what got his club to the ball without him changing his open position of his shoulders. Do that again, Gene. That little two or three inch step which moved his hips eight or nine inches is what enabled him to get his club to the ball so that all he had to do was put his hands together and it's there. It's, it, his hands didn't reach out for the, for the ball with his club. His step did it. That way he stayed open. If he reached out with his hands for the ball, he'd close his shoulders. Do that, Gene not a correct step. If the step is taken correctly, his left hand really will just move around to in front of him, near his body and left of the center of his body. 
I call this the other part of this of the, of this routine. The other part is bringing your hands together. When he, when, if his right hand's hanging comfortably here and his left hand's hanging comfortably here, and they both start together, they both come together at each other. The shoulders won't change relationship. They'll tilt, and his step and his movement of his body will get him to the ball. That's it. One more thing I want to mention. Do it again, Gene, from this way. From this way. His left heel will only come off the ground a little bit when he's stepping on this 40-degree angle. It'll only come off the ground a little bit here because he's at a 40-degree angle. Nothing like what it did when we, when we walked straight and stopped. Thank you. When, when we walked straight and stopped, that was to set up the feeling of how it ought to be on the right foot and right leg. The left foot has nothing to do with this in reality. That was to get the feel of the right foot. There's one more thing that I'd like to mention. When he takes this little step and goes down with his right hand to get the club, that ensures him of his erectness. That's why that step's very important. His hips were moving forward the eight or nine inches. At the same time they were moving forward, he's putting his right hand on the club. Okay, why is that important? I want to talk to you about a minute about that. Bending over from the waist, to put the club down to the ball closes the shoulders. Bending down from the waist has the hips moving backward. If the hips are moving forward because of the little step, they can't move backward. And if they can't move backward, they can't, the shoulders won't close. Also, if they, don't, if they can't move backward, but they're moving forward, the only way you can lower the ball is to lower your right shoulder. So that, that little step is the cornerstone to, to EOL in my book, to being erect, to be open, and being lower with the right side. In summary on this routine, I want to mention the fact that the routine accomplished a bunch of things. One, it got the torso aligned correctly. Two, it created the right posture. Three, it created the correct tilt in the shoulders. Four, it created the correct distance from the ball. Five, it created the correct aim of the club face. Six, it created a correct stance that was aligned with the aim of the club face. And seven, because you approach the ball from the same spot, it creates a very good chance of putting the ball in the correct spot in your stance. That's seven things.